Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight it's going to be about Liquibase, which is a way of actually keeping track of all the changes that we are doing to our database when we are developing and we're, when we are creating new versions uh, of our software. Then uh, very often we need the database to be updated with new tables, maybe new table definitions. And Liquibase could be the answer right here. I got this uh, recommended by someone in the comments, uh, a guy with the F something. Thank you very much for leading me into, the, uh, yeah, into this direction right here. I might make more videos about Liquibase. This is just an up and running video and the basics. So uh, what happens tonight is that I've actually created a Postgres database with uh, Docker Compose, which is up and running on its own network called My Network, as we can see in the top. Then I've also in, uh, uh, the admin are running. That means that then I can uh, administrate my databases. Um, then I can administrate my databases through port 8080 and using a browser. So that means that I can use a browser to see what is going on into the Postgres database. Furthermore, uh, I'm running Liquibase from Docker because then I did not have to install anything on my own machine. I did not have to uh, mess it up or pollute it with uh, with Liquibase. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so that's why I'm running it as, uh, as a Docker script. When I'm running it as a Docker script, then of course I am adding, uh, applying, uh, saying it, it should run on my network, uh, on the Docker network, which is a virtual network I just created. Just wrote uh, Docker network create and then uh, my network. That means that Liquibase is running on the same network. That means that I can then point to Postgres, the Postgres server through uh, with the service name. So. And when I run, when I start the uh, Liquibase, it has a lot of commands you can give it. One of the commands is um, is, uh, is update, and that is the most used one. And, and what update will do, it will actually check the, the, the XML file or the SQL file or the JSON file that we are pointing to. And I will use XML in this, uh, in this video right here. And then it will actually take that and then it will execute it through uh, against the database if it has not already been executed. So that, that is, uh, it, 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 uh, yeah, it, it, it keeps track of the history. And I'll just show you how it does that in just a minute. Uh, but uh, if you need to point to a file and best practice, if you go to Liquibase uh, basis documentation, then you will see that you need to have some kind of master file or an all changes file or something like that. that, that then you point to that file. Inside that file, then you point to all the changes you're going to make, change one, change two and very fast you'll come up to change 100 or whatever and you can name them instead of just naming one two three then name them whatever they're doing for instance i've made named my uh, mine uh, change spaceship and sp change fruit because i'm making a fruit table and a spaceship table inside the same database does it make sense yes maybe it does because maybe we need fruit on the spaceships of course um or maybe it doesn't but that doesn't matter it's just for the just to see the example right here when we start Liquibase the first time against the Postgres and it is connect, it has a successful connection. Then the first thing it actually does, it actually creates two tables. One, ta one table named database change lock. That is the first table, and another one uh, database change lock lock. And the lock table can only contain usually only it can only contain one row. If it contains one row, that means that another Liquibase instance is running against the database. So then it will not try to run again. It will return with an error and say there's already a Liquibase trying to run jobs against the database. It's a way of ensuring that two developers are not trying to update the production environment at the same time. Of course, this should also be made by DevOps. So let's call them DevOps instead. Um, then we have the change log database change log table. It contains all the scripts that has been executed against the against the database. So um, and that's that is how Liquibase can actually keep track of what has been run against the database and that, and what has not been run. So when you're running update, you will only get the scripts. Uh, you will you will only get uh, you, know, you will only get the the changes run that uh, has not already been run. But now you have the drawing. This is what we're going to do. I thought that this drawing would give a good overview before we jump to my IntelliJ workspace, which is right here. And let me just start with closing all the files. As usual, I have a lot of stuff running. Um, I would like to show you the basics first. Uh, I have this Postgres folder right here. I have a Docker Compose file right here. That is how I started up my Postgres, just so if you're interested. Then uh, uh, I placed it on the network, my network. I have set the password, my mic, and I'm using Postgres latest right here. And the service is named my Postgres. 
Then I have the admin right here. I really love this tool. It's uh, really awesome for uh, yeah for ch watching and for administrating uh, database systems like Postgres and MySQL or whatever that is. It 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 has a lot of different uh, types. We, I will make a video about that uh, later on. So then we have uh, networks right here. Networks are defined right here. My network I set external to true. That means that Docker will Docker Post will not try to create it. It will expect it to already be there. The reason why I do that is if if I if I stop my Docker if I stop my uh, dog compose, write dog compose down, then if if I had set this to false, then it would actually delete the the my network, and that is. Uh I, I don't want to do that. I just want to uh, to keep my network up and running because maybe I would reuse this network in another Docker file. Actually, I'm not, so I could have set it to false, but that's another thing. Then I have this uh, liquid base command uh, right here. This is a Docker command that I'm running. I could also have created this as a Docker compose file, but uh, I did not do that because it was faster just to copy paste from uh, yeah from Docker Hub and from the example that um, that liquid base already have uh, up there. So uh, they have this awesome image, which is right there, liquid base. And I can see I made a change, I made an error. I actually thought it was liquid base. So uh, I, I also wrote D, I'm, I'm probably not the first one who made that mistake, right? But um, yeah, so what I'm doing, I'm, I'm volume mapping in all the files inside this fi uh, folder right here, script L base. That means that all these uh, change files right here, I'm volume mapping them into the Docker that runs the liquid base. I'm, run I'm mapping it into liquid base slash change lock. And then I am placing this Docker uh, instance uh, on uh, this Docker container on my network. And that is how you can actually see the my Postgres service right there. And then I'm running the script, uh, the, the Docker image, uh, liquid base slash liquid base. And thank you very much for that Docker image. It's 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 awesome. Yeah, and then I, of course I need to give a connection a string right here. This is my database, my port. This is my database, Mike's DB. That's just the name of my database. Then I have current schema, and that is public right there. And then I point to the master uh, XML file, and this is uh, the change log file. And here I point to all changes.xml and I have um, I've, I've added my username right here and my password right there. I set log level to debug because I would like to see what's going on. It's very interesting in the beginning. And then we give the command. There's a lot of commands we can give. One of them is update. We will go through some of our uh, commands another day, but update is the most uh, used one, the most uh, important one, because that is the one that actually updates the database. Then I have playground folder right here. Don't mind that right now. Um, let us look at the script folder right there. Then we have all changes. This is my all changes right here. Then, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of X XST and there's a lot of uh, XML namespaces that I need to need to be named right mentioned right here for everything to go up work uh, and to work. And then I include two files. One of them is DB change spaceship XML. And the other one is the DB change fruit, and that is the those two files that are right here. And because I'm mapping it inside the uh, the liquid base uh, folder, liquid base change lock, then of course I need to add that in front, or else the files cannot be found. That's actually it. So first of all, let us go look at, at our database. It is right here. We have Mike's database. We have a public schema. I have a lot of tables right here. Let, let us drop all the tables to begin with. But you can see I already have fruit, spaceship, database change lock, and uh, database lock. And that is because, of course, I've been practicing before I started recording. And I actually thought it was, I didn't think it was that easy, actually, from the documentation. Um, I think it could be a little bit uh, better, but maybe it's just me. You can, uh, yeah, you can go to uh, liquidbase.org and then you then uh, go to. Uh, I would recommend that you go to find the best practice. You go to best best the, the section about best practice to get started. There's also a good video about what what's actually going on. But um, yeah, it was not straightforward. It was not. It was not straightforward. I think the examples could have been a little bit better, but um, yeah, I figured it out. So other people will also figure it out, I guess. Um, then I have my, let us look at the spaceship file. So right now here I have db spaceship. I have one change set right here. I need We need to set an author and an ID, and that's really cool because then people can see which developer actually wanted to add this table or alter the table. Right now we are going to create the spaceship table right here, and we're going to create three columns. The uh, ID column, which is going to be, uh, has a primary key, 
yeah, it has a constraint auto increment true. Yes, yeah, so it, it just gets a running number. Then we have the model, which is a varchar 250. And then we have a captain, which cannot be null. Then we have fuel percentage right here that we want to add. And let us look at the fruit. The fruit is quite simple. We have an ID, we have a name of the fruit, and a take score from 0 to 10. There's no constraint on the number, so it could also be 1, 1 million if, if you want to add that. So that is the files, and now I have deleted, I have uh, ruined my database, which is really, really good. I have deleted all the tables. So let us go to a terminal and run the update command. So I'll just clear right here. And I have, I have this command right here, liquid-based CMD, update is, uh, SH with for shell script. So let us try to run it and see what actually happens. A lot of output, a lot of output. It looks cool. And then we can actually see the SQLs right here. Insert into the change log. So that is the change log that's been updating right here. Then we have the another change log. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah that's another change log. And then we have the oh what what was that? Let me just check. Create table. Okay, now here we're actually creating the fruit table. That was actually what I was looking for. Create table, uh, public fruit, and then blah 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 blah. So we can actually see the SQL right there. And we could also have fed it with an SQL file instead. It is very flexible, liquid, liquid base is very flexible. There's both a professional version and then there's the community edition, and this is the community edition I'm running right, right here. And then we have the insert into public, that is the change. Then we have the spaceship right here. Here we are creating the spaceship. So it looks awesome, and it should be um, it should have been executed. So let us go to our adminer, and let us refresh. And now I got four tables. I got my spaceship. Let us go look at the spaceship. I have my model, my captain, my fuel. I can zoom in a bit. Let us create a new item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Model, round, captain, mic, of course, fuel. Yeah, it is. It is okay. It's like, like this. Save. So now I have one row inside my spaceship table. So it actually works as it should. Let us go back because uh, what is interesting is actually the change, um, the database change lock. And let us select the data. Then we can see we have two entries right here the DB change uh, fruit and the DB change spaceship right there. They have been executed, and this is the time uh, where they've been executed. And this is UTC. So even though that the uh, Copenhagen time I'm plus two hours, then, um, yeah, then they're still saved in. UTC. Very good. Let us go back to the lock table. This table it can have one row. If I if I'm fast, maybe I can. Uh, maybe we can actually see that row. So now I'll run, and then I'll quickly refresh. Ah, select the data. I was too slow, wasn't I? Yes, I was way too slow. I was way too slow. So what could we do? We could actually delete the tables again. Oh, let us just try again. Yes, I was oh, I was so fast. Right now, right look right here. Lock granted, locked by, and then this is the container name, an IP address, and um, then we have an ID right here, and it's locked. Yes, it's locked. And then at some point, when uh, when the when, yeah when the container is done running. Then uh, of course it will free up the table again, and now we have zero. Now we have uh, lock grant and lock by uh, set to null. Okay, so that's actually always uh, there's always one row actually. It is just setting these values to to null um, when it is not locked. I think this is awesome. Uh, I'm very impressed. So this is a, I think this is a cool way of actually handling the database changes that uh, that need to be made especially if when we have a, a lot of environments then it can yeah, it can see i think it can save a lot of time it can also uh, enable it also enables us to save the changes and have them under source control and it, it, it also gives us transparency and a revision track so we can see who did what and when and we can also roll back if that's what we want so there's a lot of cool features uh, in, in in liquid base but this was the up and running and of course as usual i will uh, commit and push all of this code um yeah so thank you very much for watching i hope to see you again soon have a great evening bye bye